Oh, dude, sorry, I'm late, Jim. I've actually, I've hurt my back today. Uh, I'm not gonna lie. Uh, you're there, oh, freezing, you're late again. Well, bro, look, I got assaulted on the way to work today. Assaulted, Chip. I got assaulted by milk cream. What? Milk and cream. Someone chucked milk and cream. How dare he? <laughs> we got a quick case today. Let's yes, get it. Yes, we have a quick case because the fellas will be going on a chartered flight to the Bahamas. What? Ooh. That no. was Cap. We're just going on official work business to the mm. streets of Chicago. However, we have a case for you today and it involves a man called Ricky McCormick. Ricky was poor, suffering from health problems and had run into legal trouble more than once in his life. His body was found in a vacant field on June 30th, 1999 by a passerby in West Alton, Missouri. The location of his body, along with the mysterious notes found in his pocket, told police they were dealing with homicide. This case happened on June 30th, 1999. The body was discovered in St. Charles County, Missouri. This My birthplace. That's Cap, I'm from Oldham. Guys, this particular case, it is quick, but it, again, if you were a fan of the Cicada case that we did, which was all about code breaking and understanding a true mystery, then you'll enjoy this case because this combines a murder and some code breaking. Yes, and of course, The Fellas Mysteries is now available on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and all other audio platforms. So go ahead, hit the link in the description if you're watching on YouTube and go and listen there. Hit us with a follow. Just drop a follow. Even if you, you watch all this, the way you show love on here is by go ahead and following us yes, on those Yes, help us get off those charts. Anyway, back to the case. Ricky McCormick, he was a high school dropout. Now. There's some, nothing wrong with that. Yeah, I mean, hey, look, there are some dropouts uh, that have gone on to achieve amazing things. I think mm -hmm. Bill Gates dropped out of college. Maybe not high school, but college. Anyways, uh, we're going down a, a different path here. Unfortunately, that wasn't uh, the fate of Ricky McCormick. Instead, nope. um, he was an ex-con, right? And according to an article in 1999 from the St. Louis Post-Dispatch, right? McCormick suffered from chronic heart and lung problems. Okay, right? not so ideal. This, this had been known before. Um, he had at least four children, but wasn't married, and he actually had a criminal record. Now, Ooh. this is a serious cr criminal record because he'd served 11 months of a three-year sentence for statutory rape, okay? How has he raped someone and only served 11, 11 months? months? The justice Insane. system has not done a good job there. No, it, absolutely not. Um, he was living between staying with his family or out on the streets. So this guy was a real floater, if that makes sense. Like, didn't have a core, uh, like a place that he could yeah. call home. He didn't have a settled life, that's for yeah. sure. Things weren't going exactly his way. At the time of his death, um, he was 41 years old, unemployed and receiving disability welfare payments, like you said. Just, look, like, his not life was, yeah. was not good. He, he didn't have anything going for him and he'd clearly made a lot of mistakes in his past. Yep. Serious mistakes as well. Um, and you're probably wondering, how was this Ricky found? Well, he was found by a woman driving down Route 367. Oh, I know that Ima Imagine, Imagine the A12. I can't, I, I, I'll be honest, I can't imagine the A12. Right, well, just imagine a bit of road. Why? You should have said M3. Ah, uh, the M3. <laughs> yeah, it would have been right on my street. Yeah. Now, uh, he was found on June 30th, 1999. Uh, the body was actually decomposing in a field for a couple of days. Okay. Um, it was actually so decomposed um, that the F FBI had to find out the identity through fingerprints. So his obviously, face had obviously... It was obviously... on the database, though. It was on the database. I feel, like, previous. I feel like it was only a couple of days, right? Mm -hmm. He had decomposed so much in a couple of days that he couldn't be identified. Is that Does that sound about right? I would normally... I would say, okay, if he's decomposing for like a month. Yeah. That, that to me. But I don't know my biology. So yeah. maybe a body can decompose in just a couple of days. Yeah, I mean, it was in a field, so nature is doing its thing out in a field. Yeah. It's not blocked away in a room or anything like that. the grass like that. is touching his skin. So. Yeah. yeah, that's exactly what I meant. It could be poisonous grass. Uh, cool. At this point, what about the autopsy? The toxicology report is, yes. can we get anything to figure out a cause of death? Can we? You tell me. No. Yes, guys, we are back and we need to keep this big old light on. Oh, you, you can't see 100%. it, but it's literally right here, yep. okay? Uh, and we have ourselves a little ad read for you guys. Um, and it's from the good people over at Babbel. Lovely. Chip, how many times have you been on holiday? 
and you've gone and you try to order something and you can't quite communicate exactly what you're after. You're a All picky eater as it me, is. Me knowing Glesha. Yeah, see, as you can tell, Chip is in desperate need of using Babbel. Now, if you guys are interested in learning new languages, then I would highly recommend Babbel. Um, me and Chip are actually off to, we're off on holiday, so we need to get on this ASAP. Yep. But uh, just to run you guys through exactly what it is, they teach you language in 15 minute lessons, which is super ideal because it allows you to just do it whether you're jumping on the tube, you can just get one lesson done nice and quickly, or you know, maybe you have a longer one and you can get through three or four. It's a nice little uh, bite size I like that. lessons, which, which is always very ideal. Now, um, what it does is it you uh, a lot of other places will just use AI. Essentially, they're cheapskating it, right? But what Babbel do is they have over a hundred language experts putting this stuff together. So it's tip top professional level this stuff. Is serious stuff. Yeah, it really is. It is serious, okay? Um, and in fact, it's so serious that Babel's teaching method has been scientifically proven, right, to be effective across multiple studies that they've done on it, which is great. I mean, you don't want to be wasting your time. If you're going to actually dedicate your time to learning these languages, at least make sure you're doing it in the best way you can. And that's what Babel does. Mm -hmm. Babel recently launched their own learning podcast as well. Um, so you can brush up on your Spanish or French while cooking, exercising, anything like that. You can literally just have it on in your ear nice and easy. You guys know how much we love podcasts over here. Uh, if you're wondering what sort of uh, languages, well, they have 14 different ones. Chances are the one you're after is in here, uh, including Spanish, French, Italian, German. Not only that, but uh, they actually have speech recognition technology. Now, let me tell you, this is absolutely key because there's no point in learning a language if you're going to sound really funky when you do it, right? So what it does is it helps you work on your pronunciation and your... Amazing. So guys, start your new language journey today with Babbel, right? If you guys are interested, then what they're doing is they're often offering you guys six months free with a purchase of a six month subscription. But you have to use the promo code MYSTERIES. MYSTERIES. So like make sure that. you spell that right as well so that you can get your six months free when you purchase a six month subscription. So that is uk.babble.com forward slash play and use the promo code MYSTERIES, right? uk.babble.com slash play promo code mm -hmm. mysteries for an extra six months free. Uh, um, why it, was, it was it was really that decomposed that there was not that much to use from the body to, to help with anything. They were lucky really just to even get an identity. Um, it was later found out that he was actually seen alive only five days earlier on June 25th. Ooh. So the body hadn't been there for that long. No, not at all. The body, five days and it decomposed to the point where they couldn't identify him. That to That's me sounds- pretty crazy. That sounds a bit crazy, you know, maybe. He maybe this maybe this is beyond my scientific knowledge. Maybe, yeah. And not only that, we have to remember he probably wasn't in the best of health either. This was a no. man that was living out on the streets as well. Uh huh. That could potentially you play know, into it. But we're so, not scientists, Chip. No, we're not scientists. We anyway, go ahead. Tell tell them tell them why this case is what it's case and why it's earned a spot on the fellas mysteries podcast and YouTube channel. Not a problem, my friend. Now the reason this case is such a mystery, it sounds like your standard case, uh, uh, you know, just straight off the details we've given. Yeah. But in fact, two handwritten documents were found in his pockets when he was discovered. Now, these documents were a complex cipher, which the American Cryptogram Association, which is part of the FBI, by the way, uh -huh. um, and many other code breakers had failed to crack. So straight off the bat, these are obviously some serious ciphers, if they even yeah. are ciphers, maybe it's just gibberish. Um, his family claimed that he didn't write in code and he couldn't spell anything, just scribble. Look, take a look here. So we're going to put these documents uh, up there and uh, podcast. The way I can describe it to you is it does look, it, it, it doesn't look like just scribble to me. It's it clear, almost like paragraphs. Yeah, He's circled some stuff as well. Like you said, though, this this man was in a bit of a state, you know, was he suffering from a, you know, a certain mental issue that yeah. had caused him to get to this point where he is just scribbling on paper? Like his family said he couldn't spell anything, just scribble. It is a cipher and it does look like gibberish almost. Uh, anyway, didn't own a car in the area, didn't have any public transport, obviously out in the middle of nowhere. Well, in the US, it's not, it's not like that's, it is in the that's UK. That's not uncommon because uh -huh. it is a big, big country and yet, yeah, but yet, yeah, Despite all that, he was found 15 kilometers away from his address. How? That yeah. that means that surely somebody else has had to be involved, you know? He's not called an Uber, has he? Yeah, you, look, realistically though, he could have 
walked that distance. Yeah. We have got to remember he was last I seen mean, only five days yeah, prior. In five days, you can easily, easily walk. Easily walk, yeah, yeah, I could walk. Could walk, could walk it in a day if you I want. could run it in a couple of hours. No, you, Chip, you are not running 50 kilometers, I promise Don't you. Don't you doubt me. Anyway, apparently there was no motive to kill him and no one had reported him missing. Now, I would argue here that there yeah. could be a motive to kill him because about to this say. man has committed statutory rape, yeah. okay? And he only got 11 months for it. It could have been there's a, a lot of that. there's an angry family yeah, out there somewhere. A, a family looking for vengeance, you know, a uh -huh. brother, a brother, a father, you know, even a mother. Anybody from that family could have been like, 11 months, that ain't it. We're gonna do him in." For sure. You touched on his mental health. Yes. Okay. So was this just genuinely scribbles? Was this uh, a bit of an insane person that was scribbling away? Mm -hmm. Well. Um, there's actually some conflicting reports and also opinions, which always makes things slightly interesting, about his mental state. Um, now, at his trial for his previous conviction, mm -hmm. um, it was claimed that he might be suffering from some sort of mental disease or defect, right? Um, but a local psychologist uh, found him mentally competent to stand trial. So, it, it, he can't be that crazy yeah. or... or, or you know, suffering from too much if you can stand trial. Yeah, true, unless the so local psychologist got it wrong, but that's quite unlikely, I would say. There's also the case that maybe his condition deteriorated over time. I mean, we're talking about the, um, you know, uh, in his previous trial, he's, he's done his 11 months, he's, he's maybe been through some more stuff, and is he worse off for it as his mental state yeah, rapidly you know. declined? It doesn't happen overnight. Maybe it has just declined over that time. Yeah, and he was never diagnosed with anything. That's the the sort of uh, the main thing to take away from this, mm -hmm. right? Um, and people say, yeah, he was quite uh, street smart, but also childish. So maybe not the most intelligent bloke. But if he's not that mm. intelligent, then what's the code in the pocket? Did he write it? Did someone else write it and put it in? Was it a message yeah. for someone else? Was he was having it? an episode or like, yeah, maybe somebody else wrote it. Well, yeah. the FBI do believe that the notes will point to the person responsible for his death, okay. but the notes do remain unsolved and are listed as one of CRRU's top unsolved cases, which wow. is the FBI's crypto, anal crypto analysis and racketeering records unit. That's a, I'm not going to lie, that is an absolute yeah, mouthful. Yeah, that's a mouthful. Uh, his girlfriend also claimed that a couple days earlier, mm -hmm. uh, he, came back from, he came back from Florida shaken and anxious. So, what, he's gone on a little trip, he's come back, something's happened. Has he, has he pissed someone off is on he, his yeah, trip? Yeah, is he involved with um, some pretty bad people? You know, yeah. we're talking I mean, drug I imagine, gangs. Yeah, I was going to say, I imagine he probably, you know, if he's out on the street, he's... He's probably not mixed up in the, uh, not the, the best, best people. Yeah, like, well, right? when you get into that situation and you need money, that's when people can fall into these, you know, kind of gang-like situations, yeah. you know, dealing drugs, getting involved sure, in man. moving some hard weight. Some hard weight. Chippo yeah. knows about moving that hard weight, <laughs> wow. trust me, you know. Uh, and let's talk a little bit about the code here. Now, obviously, the community, the code-breaking community, in their in the, in their masses came and said, "Don't worry, FBI will help you out." And uh, by phone and email, they were they were trying to help the FBI solve this because yeah, obviously these things are interesting. People, People on the love internet doing love that this, stuff. Yeah, right. But the FBI said, "You lot got to chill. There is too much." They actually stopped. They said, "Right, no more phone calls, no more emails about this because it's just becoming too much." They probably wow. had so many rubbish leads, rubbish attempts, and they were like, it's all just getting too much. Instead, what they decided to do was they opted to have a page where people could comment their Like theories. a web page. Yeah. Yeah, okay, yeah, 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 that yeah. makes more sense to be fair. Yeah, um, there's a bunch of different theories going around right now as to what it could be. We've touched on one. Was it just a mentally ill person that was scribbling and had written things down on a page mm -hmm. and ended up getting a little bit, you know, it was just unlucky for the FBI to find like this message in here and it's just, it, it doesn't actually mean anything. Yeah, it's all a bit coincidence, things have just yeah. added up yeah. in a weird way. Uh, analysts of the handwriting actually said that this note felt very personal mm -hmm. because of the way it's written. And even if you look at it, even, you know, you don't understand what it is, you just look at it, it does look like a personal note. It does, it? yeah, it does. There's, I won't cap. Yeah, like we mentioned earlier, there's small details, there's circling around certain words and paragraphs. Um, or parts of the code, if you will, mm -hmm. um, which indicated that it was a little bit more. more I, I I think that the circles around it do make it seem like 
he was, you know, it's like almost like when you are circling things and you're trying to remind yourself or like you're circling something important on, yeah. on this case file, for example, even. Yeah. That's what it looks like to me. But at the same time, he's circled such big sections. It's almost like he's just circling the paragraphs. Is he just mentally? Yeah, Ill yeah. I'd understand that. if maybe he'd circled certain words, like, right, okay. but he hasn't. So it's a little bit confusing. It is, and I guess this is why it hasn't been solved to this day. Yeah. Another thing is that, hey, was he getting mixed up? Like we mentioned, he went to Florida, came back a little bit anxious after that. Did he get involved in the drug world? And was this code, was was he was he a mule? Was he just tra was he just transporting this a message? This message, and he doesn't maybe he doesn't even understand the code, right? Yeah. But he's taking that and he's delivering it, and that person that receives it will understand the code. Yeah, maybe he's just taking it from one drug gang to another. Yeah, and it's a message, and he was simply the yeah he the went messenger. he went to Florida, got the code, came back. Was supposed to deliver it, maybe. He, and travel plans in the future. I don't know. Maybe he actually got to the person he delivered it to, and they actually just decided to kill him. Yeah. So that's really, there's really not much else to it, guys. This is a short case. It's an interesting case, though, because it must be really annoying. Because all these codes, you know, it has this, this is still unsolved. People still haven't figured it out. But what if it's just a load of nonsense? Yeah, I mean, the autopsy report came back with nothing, you know, no gunshots, no stab yeah. wounds. How has this fella died? And why is he out and in the middle of the field? why is he 15 kilometers away from his home in a place with no public transport? With a, a coded message in his pocket. Hmm. Look, maybe the answer is in our comment section. Maybe you guys can figure this out. You guys take a look for us. Anyways, that is today's fellas mystery. We appreciate it. It is a short one, but it's quite an interesting one anyways. We'll be back with another one shortly. Hope you guys have enjoyed this episode. Yes, absolutely. And what do they need to do, Chip? Come you on. need to go and head over to Spotify and Apple and any other audio platforms and follow the Fellas Mysteries because we are now on there. Um, and also... What else you got to say, Chip? It can't be anything helpful. Come on. You know me so well because it isn't anything helpful. Yeah. <laughs> Tell them goodbye. Um, goodbye. What about little gunshot? You do the little gunshot. I don't know, man. I'm just off my shit today. No, no, no. Oh, no, no, you got to do it, bro. We can't leave you out without doing this. We can't. You're gonna have to. You're gonna okay. have to do it. You gotta go. You it's know got, what? You got to do it with left hand. You almost did it with your right hand. Imagine that. That would have been weird.